Hello, my name is Henry Silverman, and I would like to give a presentation on the ethical issues involving surrogate decision making for patients. So, who can make healthcare decisions for patients who lack decision making capacity? A healthcare proxy is the general term for anyone who can make medical decisions on behalf of a patient. There are three kinds of healthcare proxies a guardian, a healthcare agent, and a surrogate. A legal guardian is a person who has been appointed by a judge to take care of a minor child called a ward or an incompetent adult. A health care agent is someone appointed by an individual to make health care decisions for him or her. Most health care agents are appointed through an advanced directive, sometimes referred to as a durable power of attorney for health care or simply a POA. A health care agent may also be appointed by a verbal witness statement to a physician that is documented in the medical record. This is just as valid as a written advance directive. If there is no legal guardian or appointed health care agent available, then local laws may indicate who can serve as a surrogate for the incompetent patient. A priority list is usually given. Local laws usually define a priority list of surrogates indicating in descending order who has the primary moral authority among surrogates to make decisions for patients. At the top of the list is the patient's spouse or domestic partner, followed by an adult child of the patient, a parent of the patient, and then an adult sister or brother. Such laws also confer authority to a friend or other relative of the patient. In the latter situation, the friend or relative needs to present an affidavit stating specific facts and circumstances demonstrating that that person has maintained regular contact with the patient, sufficient to be familiar with the patient's personal beliefs. Such a statement is necessary to give assurances to the health care team that that person can make accurate decisions for the patient. Now, there are differences in the moral authority given to the legal guardians or health care agent on one hand and surrogates on the other hand, mainly because legal guardians and health care agents have been specifically appointed by either the court or the patient, whereas surrogates have not been specifically appointed. For example, legal guardians and appointed health care agents can make any decisions for incompetent patients, including decisions to forego life-sustaining treatments, regardless of the medical condition of the patient. However, for surrogates, in order to make decisions to withhold life-sustaining treatments, frequently local laws allow such decisions only if patients are in certain medical conditions, and these include a persistent vegetative state, terminally ill, or an end-stage condition. Proxies should make decisions for patients based on one or two decision-making standards. One decision-making standard is called the substituted judgment standard, whereby one attempts to make a decision that the patient would have made based on the patient's previous statements in an advanced directive based on the patient's values, and other decisions that the patient may have made in the past. Frequently, this can prove to be difficult. If evidence of previous wishes of the patients is lacking, then surrogates should be guided by the best interest standard, whereby one attempts to make a decision based on what would be in the patient's best interest, considering burdens and benefits. Frequently, one uses a combination of both decision-making standards to make decisions for the patients. There can be challenges to surrogate decision-making. First, there can be concerns regarding the accuracy of the decisions made by surrogates. A recent paper reviewed 16 studies involving almost 20,000 patient surrogate paired responses to certain scenarios. Overall, surrogates predicted patient treatment preferences with 68% accuracy. Neither patient designation of surrogates nor prior discussions of patient treatment preferences improved surrogate predictive accuracy. Essentially, patient designated and Mexican surrogates incorrectly predicted patient's end of life treatment preferences in one third of the cases. Barriers to quality surrogate decision making also results from the interplay of factors involving the surrogates themselves 
physicians, processes of care factors, and environmental aspects. Surrogates face emotional, psychological, interpersonal, and moral barriers to effective decision making. An example of an emotional barrier is the high levels of anxiety and depression surrogates frequently experience when a loved one is critically ill. A growing amount of empirical literature from decision-making psychology indicates that emotions can profoundly impact decision-making. Very intense emotions can impair one's ability to process information and deliberate carefully. This is especially of concern when surrogates are being asked to deliberate about complex trade-off filled decisions such as those that balance quantity and quality of life. There are also physician level barriers to high quality surrogate decision making. For example, physicians may be reluctant to make a transition from curative goals to comfort oriented goals out of an unconscious belief that it signals that they have failed their patient. Moreover, physicians in ICU often have very substantial constraints on their time because of the high patient volume and acuity encountered in many ICUs. Processes of care attributes of ICUs pose barriers to good surrogate decision making. For example, the need to coordinate the schedules of multiple busy professionals and families is a complex organizational barrier. The frequent turnover of staff proves to be another barrier. Finally, environmental factors may also prove to be problematic. For example, in many ICUs, there is no dedicated consultation room for clinician family meetings. Another challenging structural attribute is the shift-based nature of work in the ICU, which makes it difficult to ensure a coherent plan of communication and decision-making week to week. It is likely that these factors each contribute to inadequate clinician-family interactions that in turn mediate poor patient and family outcomes. There may also be disputes between surrogates of equal decision-making priority. For example, there may be disputes between the parents, which not infrequently occurs when the parents are separated or divorced. There may also be disputes between the siblings of the patient. In such cases, one needs to try to mediate between the disputing parties. For intractable disputes, the law in Maryland states that for such disputes, the attending physician shall refer the case to the Institution Ethics Committee, and he or she may act in accordance with the recommendation of the committee. There may also be challenges between physicians and surrogates regarding prognosis. One study explored the prevalence of and factors related to discordance about prognosis between physicians and surrogate decision makers of critically ill patients. The study showed that there was frequently misunderstanding by surrogates and differences in belief about the patient's prognosis. Many surrogates had inordinate optimism and common reasons for optimism included a need to maintain hope to benefit the patient, a belief that the patient had unique strengths unknown to the physician, and a religious belief that amounted to the belief that only God knew if and when a patient would not respond to treatment. If surrogates are not making good decisions, can their decisions be overruled? The short answer is yes. For example, the law in Maryland states that if a health care provider for an individual incapable of making a decision believes that an instruction to withhold or withdraw a life-sustaining procedure from the patient goes against what is stated in the advance directive or is inconsistent with generally accepted standards of patient care, then he or she shall go to the ethics committee or file a petition in court. Now, there are many patients without surrogates. The scope of the problem is not insignificant. For example, one study showed that 3 to 4 percent of 1.3 million residents living in nursing homes are without surrogates. Another study showed that 5 percent of the 500,000 who die each year in the ICUs are without surrogates. Patients without surrogates are frequently the elderly, mentally disabled, homeless, and socially isolated. One option is a legal option consisting of a court-appointed guardian. 
However, there are limitations to this option. One, it could be quite expensive, and two, the judicial process can be slow and cumbersome. Another option is to establish an interdisciplinary team. Such a team would include the attending physician, the registered nurse, a patient representative, and other appropriate staff and other disciplines as determined by the patient's needs. Such a team should consult with and obtain recommendations of an institution's ethics committee. So in summary, when patients lose their decision-making capacity, it is imperative to ensure that health care decisions are legally and ethically made on their behalf. Establishment of a surrogate decision-making process must be done appropriately, and the physician must be familiar with his or her role in the process. Thank you very much.